Welcome back. So how Governor Mike DeWine voting a bill yesterday, vetoing a bill yesterday that would ban gender reassignment treatment for minors, otherwise known as mutilation, and block trans athletes from participating in girls and women's sports, otherwise known as common sense. <laughs> I cannot sign this bill as it is currently written. This bill would impact a very small number of Ohio's children. But for those children who face gender dysphoria and for their families, the consequences of this bill could not be more profound. Parents have looked me in the eye and have told me that but for this treatment, their child would be dead. Our next guest is an authentic defender of women, a true feminist, if you want to use that word. And she says that the governor is a coward. Joining us now is the director of the Riley Gaines Center at the Leadership Institute and ambassador at the Independent Women's Forum, Riley Gaines. Riley, good morning. Thanks for being here. What's your response to the governor? Well, you just said it. Um, I believe not only is he a spineless coward, I believe he's morally bankrupt. Uh, there's no argument any sort of moral person could make that would veto this bill. Not only, of course, as I mentioned, is this um, lack of morals and showing a lack of doing what's right and what's fair and what's just, this doesn't accurately represent Ohioans, or, or nevertheless, it doesn't represent the nation of America. Yeah, I, I think it would be interesting, and I wonder if your organization is going to look into it. Like, what are the financial ties that he has to the medical community? He admitted, um, as Pete pointed out earlier in the show, that he got advice from doctors and so many of the hospitals that are very powerful in his state. Um, what kind of, you know, is he potentially compromised in this way in making this decision? Of course, and I believe that's something that needs to be looked into because ultimately that's that's what this movement is about. Yes. Uh, whether that's corporate America, whether that's the NCAA, whether that's within academia, within the media, uh, this movement, the gender ideology movement as a whole, not just sports, of course, uh, the gen transgender care aspect of this, it's very much driven by money. Uh, politicians, again, uh, our corporate leaders, they don't follow red or blue, of course not. Uh, they follow the green, and that has been very evident over the past year and a half, two years, I'd say, for sure. You know, one part of this bill was, uh, in my opinion, mo the most important was just to prevent surgery on minors. That's, I mean, that, to me, that is insane. The other part of the bill was about males competing in women's sports, calling themselves female, not knowing really how genuine a lot of them are. You know, Leah Thomas, I guess, announced engaged to a woman. And from that, on Twitter, you got called everything from homophobic to, I think the word was les lesbophobic. You got called names over pointing out the irony there. It seems to me that uh, at least a better investigation on who identifies as a woman could be a part of this. I don't know. Absolutely. And that's been a big push. Uh, we have recently, uh, through my work at the Independent Women's Forum, uh, created a piece of legislation called the Women's Bill of Rights, which ultimately does just that. It defines and codifies the word woman. Uh, it's been passed in four states thus far, Kansas, Tennessee, Oklahoma, most recently Nebraska. And that's a big push for this next legislative cycle, um, getting more states to implement the Women's Bill of Rights so there's no more confusion on what a woman is. I mean, we have a sitting Supreme Court justice who can't even define what a woman is because she claims she's not a biologist. <laughs> well, guess what? I'm not a veterinarian, but I still know what a dog is. Uh, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, but we need more states and, the, of course, the federal government to take this on. Uh, it's been undertaken by Representative Debbie Lesko and Diana Harshbarger at the federal level and the House side. Uh, so we're hoping to see some movement there uh, in the next year for sure. This is where we are, defining what a woman is, uh, and it's become a, a definitive political battle. By the way, in Ohio, do you anticipate the state legislature there will overturn this veto? There are enough votes there? Of course I do. Uh, there are definitely enough votes there. I mean, if you look at just the, the people who have come out in opposition, um, really detesting what Governor DeWine did yesterday, I mean, you have the Attorney General of Ohio, you have the Lieutenant Governor, you have the Senate President, you have the Speaker of the House. Uh, the votes are certainly there to overturn this, and I am confident and hopeful that it will be overridden in Ohio, making Ohio the 24th state to hopefully pass some sort of legislation that prevents men from competing in women's sports in the 22nd state. Uh, to prevent child um, surgical and chemical castration in the state of Ohio.
So, Riley, these are political battles, but there's another battle, and it's a cultural battle, and you are knee-deep in this. I mean, you are really at the forefront. You're at the tip of the spear. Um, I, I, as a woman, I can't be more proud of everything that you've done. What are you seeing on social media? I mean, Joey, Joey spoke a little bit about how you've been attacked. I mean, that's kind of predictable. But within your generation and, and on, on these very important cultural platforms on social media, are you starting to see... Uh, a, a turn that some of this indoctrinate trans indoctrination and, and all of this silliness that is resulting in a lot of people being permanently mutilated and hurt and then in terms of women's sports is are things turning around Definitely. I, I certainly believe the tide is turning, uh, and I knew this from the beginning. It was only a matter of time before people had their eyes opened. Parents, coaches, uh, young boys and girls. Uh, it was only a matter of time because truth and sanity will always prevail without a doubt. Um, but I will say, in terms of the backlash and in terms of um, people going after one another, I think what's turning a lot of young conservatives, or sorry, my generation, um, away from the conservative party is this conservative infighting that we're seeing on social media. Hmm. Um, I, I feel as if I would be remiss if I did not take the opportunity to say uh, we see a lot of this infighting, but how many of these conservatives called the governor's office and demanded that he sign the women, or this piece of legislation? I bet there's not a ton of them. That's what we need more people doing. We, mean, we need more yeah. activists, talking heads. Uh, we need people on the ground willing to do the work, not just spewing uh, information on Twitter or X or any other social media platform. Get after um, it. You've right. done a lot to help turn the tide on and, and break the spell. Um, we hope, of, of all this insanity. Thank you for your Thank courage. Thank you, Riley. Thanks, Riley. Thank you, guys. You got it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.